the most popular episode in the history of This American Life. The public radio program reported on alleged labor abuses at a Chinese factory that builds Apple's iPhones and iPads. And the story relied heavily on author and one-man performance artist Mike Daisy. Here's how host Ira Glass put it. When I uh, saw Mike Daisy perform this story on stage when I left the theater, I had a lot of questions. I mean, he's not a reporter, and I wondered, did he get it right? And so we've actually spent a few weeks checking everything that he says in his show. Then the workers start coming in. They come in in twos and threes and fours. There's a group that's talking about Hexane. N-Hexane is an iPhone screen cleaner. The problem is that N-Hexane is a potent neurotoxin, and all these people have been exposed. Their hands shake uncontrollably. That never happened at all. I never met those people. Daisy defended himself in a statement saying, I stand by my work. What I do is not journalism, right? I regret that I allowed This American Life to air an excerpt from my monologue, but this is my only regret. But hardly the only regret for the program that was left to explain this fiasco. Joining us now from New York, Eric Hasseldahl, senior editor at allthingsd.com. And here in Washington, Eric Wampel, media blogger for The Washington Post. Eric Hasseldahl, was it a fatally flawed approach for a news program to tackle such a serious subject with a guy who's a performance artist who does monologues for a living? It was, Howie, and basically the, the reason is that we, we accept an admixture of fact and fiction in our entertainment products. And while Mike Daisy's monologue is definitely an entertainment product and a thought-provoking one about a discussion we need to have, the fact of the matter is that when the fact checker uh, for This American Life contacted, uh, contacted Daisy, Daisy created a story where the translator, the key, key character here is this woman named Kathy, uh, who served as translator, fixer, all-purpose helper uh, in China. Uh, none of the, the three key anecdotes that appeared in the radio piece could be corroborated, and, mm -hmm. uh, and he lied about it. Uh, we'll get further into that in a second, Eric Wimple, but given the fabrications here, of one lie piled on another, and you've written about this, where does this fit in the pantheon of media mistakes? Um, it's, it's pretty prominent. Um, I think it's, you know, it, it's somewhere up there. It's definitely top five, top ten, I would say. But I think it's also top five, top maybe two or three in terms of how they handle it. They, they came out straight. They did a huge, you know, 58 minutes on my podcast. Uh, edition of uh, an entire edition of This American Life um, to correct the record, and it was incredibly compelling piece of journalism that correction of the record. So I think that if it was an egregious mistake, it was a glorious, glorious correction. Uh, one they would like to have avoided, right. but yes, I agree with you that it was a first-class retraction. Now, we invited Ira Glass uh, to appear on this program this morning. He was not able to do that, and Mike Daisy did not respond to our email inquiries. Uh, let me go back to New York. And just add, let's let's tease this out a little bit because it's not just that Mike Daisy who does you know who mixes up facts and fiction facts and fiction for a living uh, just told a couple little white lies here. He claimed to have visited places he didn't visit. He claimed to have seen things he didn't see. And you mentioned this business about the Chinese translator. Um, he he tried to prevent the uh, This American Life from reaching this translator by changing her name so nobody could find her. Uh, that's pretty premeditated, premeditated stuff, is it not? Right, yeah. My hat is off to Rob Schmitz of Marketplace, who brought the story to, to This American Life for the retraction episode. He put Kathy Shenzhen Translator into Google, and she was the first hit. He found, and he just on a lark, he called her, and he found her, and it turned out her name was not Anna, as Mike Daisy had told this American Life's fact checker. The, the point in the piece that I wrote for All Things D this morning, the first question is, who would think to lie to Ira Glass? And, and on top of that, who would think to lie to Ira Glass's fact checker? But on top of that, I mean, what we finally have is, is a bunch of anecdotes, like the N-hexane segment that you mentioned uh, earlier. That was in a different city, 900 miles away, and Mike Daisy claims to have met these people, which is highly, highly unlikely, and Kathy says that it never happened. Right. And I think another important thing here is that uh, all this, uh, the, one of the... The biggest thing that got trashed in this whole thing was the was the theater, <laughs> you know. In other words, arts and entertainment. You know, there's this notion somehow the theater is for liars now, um, because you know somehow it's okay if Mike Daisy lies in front of a crowd. Well, 
Ira Glass in that episode talks to him and said, well, you know, if I were at a theater and you said you talked to somebody, but you didn't talk to them, that's still a lie. <laughs> well, yeah. I want to pick up on that, but since you mentioned him, for people who are not familiar with this actor, let's play just a little bit of from Mike Daisy's one-man show, which is called The Agony and Ecstasy of Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs has always been the enemy of nostalgia. He's always understood that the future requires sacrifice. Steve Jobs is never afraid to knife the baby. Um, he's a very entertaining fellow, yes. but it, you, if you have a, a serious radio show, you're going you're gonna to peg your credibility on a guy, on this guy who entertains people for a living, who says he met with workers who were poisoned by this the cleaner, their hands were shaking. He never met with any of them. Yeah, it's almost an impossible retrofit there. I mean, and that's what you figured out, is that this guy had been in theater after theater telling these tall tales. And so it, it, he faced a, a sort of a, a quandary. He said that he was trapped. In other words, oh, if I tell these guys, hmm, that's not true, that means I've been lying to all these people, you know, for months and months. And uh, if, I don't, if I don't tell them, mm, then, uh, then this thing won't run. So he felt trapped, and it was really, that's what, what made the, um, the correction, the retraction, so compelling. But let me pick up with more of what uh, Mike Daisy had to say. Uh, he says that um, you know, he's actually proud of his work because it sparked uh, some growing scrutiny of Apple. The combination of fact, memoir, and dramatic license to tell its story, and I believe it does so with integrity. Now, uh, Eric Hesseldow, what he calls dramatic license, I would call lying through your teeth. He doesn't seem to be owning up to the um, magnitude of the fabrications that he perpetrated here. The only possible motivation I can come up with that Mike Daisy had for doing what he did with This American Life was to raise his own profile and to become a media darling leading a discussion about worker rights in China, worker rights in the electronics industry, worker rights generally. And what he has ultimately done has damaged that discussion because now we have to start all over. We have to completely recalibrate what is true and separate it from what is not. He has done more damage to a legitimate, important economic and policy discussion that we absolutely have to have. And the only reason that I can come up with is that he wanted to sell more tickets to his show and raise his media profile, and it's unfortunate. All right, let me go now to Los Angeles, where we're going to talk to Kai Rizdal, who is uh, from the program Marketplace. Uh, good morning. Sorry we had trouble getting your shot up at the top. Can you take a moment, Kai, to explain yeah. how your reporter from Marketplace, Rob Schmitz, was able to blow the whistle on this scam by Mike Daisy? Sure. It, it's a pretty basic story. I mean, Rob's been in and out of China reporting there and working there for 15 years. He knows the place. He heard the Mike Daisy piece back in January, January when it aired. And and as many other reporters did, he thought things didn't sound right. You know, the idea of Foxconn guards having guns at the gates. I mean, that just doesn't happen. You're not allowed to have a gun in China. Foxconn is the supplier um, so for Apple that makes these is, is iPhones. The, is the supplier. They're the ones, right. They're the ones that make the cases. Uh, anyway, so Rob actually did a, a very basic bit of reporting. And he, and he says it in, the, in the This American Life show that airs this weekend. He Googled Kathy Translator Shenzhen, called her up. And got a, a, and went to the factory with her and started talking to her. I mean, it was it was just basic, basic uh, shoe leather reporting. It was great. But then he uh, goes to um, to uh, This American Life, another public radio show, and he reports that he well, and Ira Glass right. so, together so what, went to talk to Mike Daisy. So my question to you is: Was he investigating the journalism of This American Life, or was he working with This American Life uh, to expose what turned out to be a fabrication? That, that's actually a two part question, right? So what happened was Rob got a hold of our executive producer Deborah Clark, and he said, "Listen." I've got this story. Let's talk about how to handle it. We thought about it for a couple of days, and Deborah said, listen, let's do this. This is Iris' story. What we want to do is get the truth out about this, however the best way to do that is. She got together with Ira. They had a couple of conversations, and they decided what they were going to do was a two-track thing. Rob would do his own story for us for Marketplace, which aired on Friday afternoon, and then Rob, in a separate editorial chain, would do the deconstruction of the thing with Ira and Mike Daisy in a joint interview in the studio. And if you heard the This American Life broadcast right. this weekend, the first 20 minutes is Rob laying out how he got to the truth of this. And then the last part is, is Ira talking to Mike Daisy about it.